Hi, I'm composer and flutist Nicole Chamberlain, and today we're going to talk about the extended techniques I use for flute choir in my piece, Summer Insomnia. Uh, so let's start off with the syllables. The first one that's noticeable is S-H-H, So I'm gonna pick up my C flute. This works on all flutes, piccolo, and really great on low flutes. Uh, so I'm going to finger a low D. See how I don't have any lip down? I have my teeth showing, but I do have like lip protruding to help funnel the air into my flute. So now if I, uh, I can also add a crescendo, which is indicated many times in the piece. It's just the amount of air. The flute is amplifying it. Now another syllable you'll notice, and the only other syllable is CH. Ch, ch, ch. It's best to practice it without your flute um, and then put the flute on it. Ch, 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 ch. So uh, here we go. I'm doing D again. Ch, 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 ch. I'm not concerned about tone. It's not about that. It's about the percussive part. And I can do a series in a row. Uh, so keep that flute firmly into your chin. So when you are speaking the consonant, when I say speaking, my vocalization is not happening. It's all air. There's no cha, 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 cha. Don't speak it. Just use the syllable position and blow the air behind it. Uh, the other one may be something you're very familiar with, which is key clicks. But what you may not know is your key clicks are not in tune unless they are on your face. So, for example, if I do low D, if I do it on my face, flattens just a little bit. It's a little louder. Uh, so put your flute on your face. <laughs> um, and again, key clicks are better on the bigger flutes, like contrabass flute um, is really good because they have the bigger keys and a bigger pipe to resonate. Um, but let's look at measure 33, and I'm gonna use just the first flutes for an example. So you may notice I'm doing low C and low D and they're repeated and I'm just letting my reef ring finger thump. I'm not like that can get a little clacky. That can be neater and tidier. So when you're all doing it together, it lines up. So you just have to be aware there's a little prep time. You do have to pick up fingers in order to put them back down. So you have to compensate for that in the rhythms to make sure that the strike happens where it's notated. So you, you have to pick up just like you would to take a breath. Um, and then the something else you may be familiar is pitch bends. So that happens in measure 49 for second flutes or measure 50, sorry, for, uh, for second flutes. Uh, so we'll use an A for this example for everyone. Piccolos have it too. And I'll demo some of these extended techniques on piccolos so you can hear the difference because there will be a minor difference. It just won't be as loud in flute. But anyway, for pitch bends, what you're gonna do, I'm gonna play A. You can start rolled out and then roll all the way in. This is not an accurate microtone or a quarter tone. It's an effect of sliding, uh, of bending that tone. So you may wanna start a little sharper and roll in. So you can start rolled in, rolled out, and then roll as far as you can. Um, you can also tilt your head up and then start and then go down to get flat. And so, for example, in 50, it's a dotted half note. So you want to just go ahead and start that bend as soon as you start the note. You can get pretty flat. Um, so if I play, I'm going to play from 49. Uh, just to kind of elong that effect. Play it from the very beginning and spread it out over time. 
Uh, and then finally, we have flutter tonguing, which is something you all are probably familiar with, and I probably shouldn't have to explain at this point. Uh, but, but it's nice to know that these are cricket sounds. You are crickets. Uh, if you have flutter tonguing, you're being bug-like. Uh, so like flute three starts it off in the very beginning. So do your best impression, whether you're gargling uh, or you're rolling your tongue. Now I'm vocalizing, which you won't do in flutter tonguing. So that's the rolled R or the gargling. Or uh, if you can do neither, you can try just a quickly double tongue. Uh, as long as you have a buddy that's flutter tonguing, you can mask it pretty good. Uh, I I would encourage you to try to learn to flutter tongue. I've had many students that could not roll their R's naturally or gargle, and we practiced with the gargling method where, and you can find fabulous YouTube videos out there now on gargling um, water, and then over time gradually weaning yourself off that water uh, to do uh, the flutter tonguing. Now I'm just going to demo all these on piccolo. I can't demo them on low flutes. I'm sorry. I do not own a low flute, uh, but I have performed them on low flutes when I've borrowed a flute uh, and they're very, very effective. But on piccolo, they're going to sound a little different. For example, the shh will not carry like a metal flute will. But it adds a kind of nice woody flavor to things. So don't be bashful about it. Um, and the same with cha. It's just got a little bit of a different timbre to it. Again, very woodsy because it's wood. Um, and then the pitch bends work just as good too. And the piccolo really does kind of kick off that whole bend story in measure 13, 14. Kind of total neck it in and then like roll it in. Uh, and then what it's really perfect for is, is the flutter tonguing later that happens in measure 25 about. It's great. Um, it's, it's littered with, uh, with all these extended techniques to kind of give the imagery of bugs in the night and wind in the night and all the creepy things a little kid would encounter, uh, you know, spending a night out on, on the farm alone. Um, so I hope you enjoy playing it. I always love hearing people playing my music. If you are playing my music and I, I probably don't, I probably, you might be surprised. I don't know you're performing it unless I'm physically involved. So let me know uh, if you have questions about any of this stuff, please let me know. I'm happy to answer whatever you may have because I know these extended techniques are, are new for a good deal of people, um, but not everyone. Some of y'all are pros and, and that's great too. So uh, thank you again. And I look forward to hearing your performance of Summer Insomnia.